Hey guys, before we get into this, I'd just like to let you know that I've uploaded my first video to my other channel. It's called 18 Ways to Make Peeing More Interesting, and yes, it's about as weird as it sounds. You can click the link on screen now to go watch it if you want to. Yeah, sure, I can do Alien. Whoa! You've just gone ahead and suggested a whole load of sins there. You know what? This is good. I like this. This gives me a lot to work with. Thanks! Click below to watch the original sins video or to buy Alien. There's a horror movie called Alien. That's really offensive. No wonder everyone keeps invading you. Alien everything wrong with, yada yada yada. Old Tammy Fox logo and music does not prepare you for one of the best sci-fi horror movies of all time. Jeremy finds a way to spin the comment, one of the best horror movies of all time, in a way that makes it sound like it's a bad thing. Still though, one of the best sci-fi horror movies of all time, so. Oh. Also, I don't know shit about space, but this is one of the least aerodynamic looking ships I've ever seen. It's like four interconnected weebles. Doesn't exactly scream streamlined. As someone who doesn't know even the tiniest thing about space, you just triggered me so hard. Just, just, ah. Uh, let's just get this actual sin out of the way early and then I can roast you for this. As H5 already kindly pointed out, spaceships don't need to be aerodynamic. There is no air in space. Aerodynamics refer to how well something travels through air. Space is called space because there's nothing in it, or it would be called stuff. Nothing, not even air. Something traveling through space can be any goddamn shape it wants. Just to accentuate how stupid this sin is, I've prepared a list of equivalent sins. Sins that use basically the same logic as that sin that you just did there. This coffin doesn't have any air holes. The person inside it would suffocate. How can the pilot of this plane see where they're piloting if it has no windows? How is a videotape supposed to fit in this VCR player if the slot is so tiny? How is this bird ever supposed to fly with such narrow wings? This center is too small. How is anyone supposed to fit inside? What is it, a center for ants? The real center would need to be at least three times this size. Yeah, no, that is, that is the same logic. Also, given what we know about Ian Holmes' character later, how was he put under like a regular human, given that he is not one? Man, the Whalen Corporation goes to prestige levels of commitment to the illusion. Maybe he was just switched off and was laying in a tube to be with the rest of the crew. Also, given what we know about Ian Holmes' character later... Also, that is incorrect use of the future tense. Also, are those Lilu nipple strips of fabric... That's the best way the future space programs can think of to cover female breasts in cryosleep. A f***ing one-inch strip of cloth. You can put full f***ing diapers on the men's crotches, but lady nipples, ah, don't waste any fabric. You know that the main purpose of diapers isn't to cover stuff up, right? It's so that... Well, you know what a diaper is for, come on. Also, as time goes on, society's standards for what is considered an acceptable level of nudity continually goes towards the more naked end. It's not like breasts actually need diapers. So for this far in the future, I'd say that this is probably a fairly realistic representation of what kind of clothing we would be given for this process. Here's a space cat. No explanation, just a space cat. Did he have a cat-sized cryosleep chamber? No f***ing clue. He's just here, right now, on the f***ing dinner table. Deal with it. Yeah, I'm sure the main thing that everyone watching this movie really wanted is more exciting cat backstory. Wouldn't you think far future spaceships would be better equipped for landing on strange planets than this movie suggests? One rock f***s everything up. No, it's a cargo ship. It's not intended to be landing on strange planets. It's designed to land in bays. This ship's hallway looks like ribs. I should keep going. No, turn back. The decor is too scary. Ah, stylized hallways. Oh, there's a giant alien skeleton. It should be evident by now they responded to a super old, outdated distress call. Yet investigative bull still goes on for a while, leading to the contamination of the ship. Yeah, now that they've established the aliens are dead, there's no real reason to poke around any further. Just a bunch of boring fucking dead aliens instead of interesting alive ones. Pfft, if only they were alive, then it would have been some kind of interesting discovery. But dead aliens? Oh, we've all seen that before. So mundane. I mean, after finding a giant skeleton, how much more effort would you really put into investigating this obviously dead place? The distress signal is obviously old. Move along. Don't go spelunking, for Christ's sake. Oh yeah, because old things are never valuable. As soon as something's old, just, yeah, fuck that thing. Ooh, that sentence could have been misinterpreted. Still though, I mean, first of all, you're implying that dead things and alive things can't coexist in the same space, which isn't true. Secondly, you're suggesting there's no reason to investigate some aliens if they're dead. 
Because I'm sure both the worlds of science and archaeology wouldn't be fascinated by this discovery. Here's an alien egg sac thing. I'm gonna touch it. Well, Jeremy, you're missing the obvious. There's a skeleton in the vicinity, which means that there's no way that that egg sac can possibly contain anything living, and therefore isn't dangerous. Ugh, Jeremy, making that stupid mistake of thinking that there can be something alive when there's something dead in the room. You fool! I love the fact that this alien has such an incredible defense mechanism, but how are they able to cut this f***er skin if it has the power to hold acid blood? Age 5 says, He sends the xenomorph for having acid blood and judges a thick skin would be necessary for it to survive. But it could be very tin, so long as it is composed of... That is a long word. And I'm fairly sure I agree with this one, so I'm going to include it exactly as it's written. It's going to be the cat. Going to be the cat. It's going to be the... What did I tell you? Also, Trevor! H5 deems this sin unjust. Alien species evolved to make humans think of sex organs just before getting killed. Yeah, but to be fair, it's not hard to make humans think of sex organs. It's like one of our default settings. I can prove it with this list of totally innocent words. If you can read this whole list and not think of sex organs once, well, then I will be thoroughly impressed and surprised. But remember, all of these words are completely innocent. Yeah, I'm fairly sure that humans are the problem here rather than the xenomorph. It was banging. Wait, you saw the alien? Where was that scene? I thought you and Ripley were just hanging back with your alien detecting device letting Brett die. H5 deems this sin unjust. At least I think it's this sin. See, he only used the timestamp in the video rather than the sin counter on screen, which makes it quite hard to tell which one he's talking about. Plus, referencing the sin specifically with some kind of quotation would also be kind of appreciated. You know, just in case anyone else is also thinking of doing something like this. And now the Nostromo, its balls heavy with the potential ejaculate of victory over an alien species, flies its four-dicked silhouette towards Earth. See what I mean? Humans being the problem here? All that has to happen is Jeremy sees some long things and some ram things in the same place and BAM! Penises fill his brain! You know, I'd like to do a side-by-side -side comparison between a penis and the Nostromo, but I don't want to get flagged, so I won't. But picture a penis next to it. They don't look very similar, do they? I'm having a hard time figuring out what a pranic lift is, or what a particle beam abhort is, or what a Padme is outside the realm of the Star Wars prequels, in a year when The Empire Strikes Back wasn't even a thing yet. So this panel is total bullshit, is what I'm saying. Oh yeah, because if this movie came out after the Star Wars prequels and Empire Strikes Back, then, and only then, would this panel make sense. And now, it's time for an end segment. And for those who don't know, end segments are something I've been planning for a while, where at the end of a Sin Sins video, I just include something extra for fun. Today's should be a pretty good example of the kind of thing you can expect, because today I'm responding to comments. I hope you enjoy. Hello, I'm Jay from Cinema Sins Sims. I just filmed an end segment and then realized that I had forgotten to record any of the audio. You may notice that today's end segment is in black and white. Now, I can assure you, this is because I am a pretentious hipster twat, and not because I am trying to hide the big red mark on my face that I got from walking into a shelf. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's respond to some comments. Before we get into that, I've got something exciting to share with you. For everyone who's left a request that I sin a specific sins video, today is your day. Possibly, maybe, perhaps because I have just bought loads of films that people have requested that I sin the Sims video fuck that I sin the Sims video oh this is John John Wick John Wick mmm daddy it's fantastic beasts I've got passengers I don't think anyone requested this are my glasses on straight yeah I've got Zoto Zootopia it's called Zootopia right why does it say Zootropolis? We've got also as well the Spider-Man trilogy, including the third one, because if they don't sell it as part of the box set, no one will buy it. So now that's out of the way. Let's respond to your comments. Kiddus says, do TMNT. No. I'd love to, but I've not seen it, and I'm gonna do all those ones I just bought first. By the way, who obtains films legitimately? I do, apparently. Why? I don't know. But now I do. Yay! In in Indranil Indranil Cup Day. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Says thank you. I have no idea what it did, but you are sincerely welcome. One Muscle Films says Venus. Venus. No, they don't. They say thanks to these videos, I don't have to bother watching the movies. No. 
That's not, that's not what this is about. No, watch the films. They're good, a lot of them. Ferdinand says, dumbest channel in YouTube. On, on YouTube. Dummy user has commented with the alphabet. Thank you. This individual says, I've been looking for a channel like this one. You've found it. King Jengas says, wow, this is awful. Your video is bad. You should, thank you for interrupting me, share. King Jengas says, wow, this is awful. Your video is bad and you should feel bad. I do. Poverty says, J is my papa smurf. Mm. Jacob Barnett says, aren't you related to Jimmy Carr? <laughs> no. Bob's best friend says, oh my god, someone else called Jay. I know, right? I've never met another one. Legitimately, never met another one. We are unicorns. Octo Daddy, Daddy says, t ha an n k w a l k m a m a w a l k Fuck it. And thus concludes that. Whatever that, that was. I responded to comments. I knew what that was. I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye. Now, if you enjoyed that, letting me know would be appreciated. I'm still working out all of the kinks of an end segment, so this doesn't really represent what they'll be forever, but I do suppose that's it. So, on screen now, there will be an end screen, where you can check out things like the Simpsons playlist and the new video on my other channel.